All right, so I'm here with Monique and Darius. Yeah. Monique and Darius, how old are you guys? I'm 18. 18? Yeah. 19. You're 19? Mm -hmm. And are you guys originally from Arizona? Yeah. Yeah. I was born on um, 23rd Indian school. Yeah. There's a hospital there? I was born here, born and raised too. Yeah. And are you guys homeless right now? Yeah, yeah currently. Yeah. Darius, yeah. how did you end up homeless? Um, I started doing pills, and my auntie, while well, I was not homeless, I, I got her at a group home, and then my auntie let me stay with her, and the plan was I was supposed to get a job and everything. But I didn't, well, I did, I had a job the next day, but I messed it up by smoking pills. And um, my auntie kicked me out because like, I was going pills and, you know, she has kids in the house too. So, like, you know, she didn't like that. And so I just left. I mean, she gave me, like, chances and everything, but one night I fucked it up and then she just told me, like, I had to go, you know? So I left. And it was, like, 4 o'clock in the morning too. I was homeless and I, I've been out here for two years and I've been doing um, pills for two years. And what about you, Mumi? What was the question? My bad. Um, how did we end up homeless? How did you end up homeless? Um, how was it? Me too, started smoking pills. Well, I started when I was 17, but like the ending of fucking December, my birthday is in January, but I fucking, uh, Um, I started smoking pills in like June, but then I didn't get too heavy on it until I was like a month later. And fucking right there when I like when I started like the first time I heard it, man, it sucked. It fuck, it sucks. It feels like you can't fucking you can't do nothing. You're just like, right there sitting down, spazzing your back hurts. So right there and then I knew like fuck, like I'm gonna need these pills, you know, and. So like I, I like I got clean a couple of times, but like I just stayed at the house, you know, getting clean for like three days, and I was good, you know. But for some reason, I always I always went back, you know. And when I hit 18, I fucking I never got kicked out. Actually, like I had got out of jail and fucking um, right there, like I went home and my uncles, like they were not talking to me like at all, like. I knew, like, right there and then, like, down, like, they're dead on my bullshit, like, they don't want to, like, they're fucking, they're fed up, you know? And I walked in the house, and nothing for them, you know? So I knew right there that they're down, like, they don't want to talk to me, like, you know? So I asked my dad to pick me up one night, and, like, this was around January 8th, and I, ever since I, like, ever since I told my dad to pick me up, I never went home, I fucking, I stayed out here with him. And um, my birthday was, my birthday is January 22nd, so fucking, I was already 18, you know, I was already legal to be out here, and ever since then, like, I just never went back home, I stayed out here, and that's how. Um, yeah. And how did you guys get introduced to the pills? Uh, my, my, my youngest brother, yeah, um, I was at the group home at the time, and, and um, yeah, I was just in the house, you know, just minding my own business with the kids, and he, I guess he came, and my auntie already had kicked them out, you know, because he was doing those, and he was doing those in the house, you know, with the kids in there, so he got kicked out, and then, but there would be times where he came, and he, he, he came to me, and he told me, he was like, hey, try this real quick, you know? So I tried it, and like ever since then, like I just I haven't, you know, I haven't stopped. Like I got clean one time, but I think like two times, but I, I went back to it because you know, like I was hurting and stuff. Yeah. And Monique, who introduced you to them? Um, I first tried it, I did it by myself, but. When he first got on it, I had broke up with him for like four or five months. Like for four months, I broke up with him. And then I don't know something like, 
something just like brought us back together. Or he had called me one day and we had chilled and supposedly right there and then he got clean, like he has been clean and stuff and um, we had got a hotel, right? And then, and then we had got a hotel and fucking um, me, like my uncle, like he wouldn't like really let me at the house and shit like that, you know? So fucking, um, I would like sneak out and I would go see him. And we know we had got a hotel and it was like in the morning and uh, he fucking, he knew like I couldn't be out here and shit cause I had school. And um, I had told my uncle, I think I had told my uncle like hey, um, when I got out of school, I think I told him, hey like um, I'm gonna go and try it. I'm gonna go. I'm I told him something that I was gonna stay at the school. No, 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 no. His auntie had picked me up. His auntie had picked me up around like 12, right? And I tried calling him, and I was like, tried calling him, and I was gonna tell him that I was gonna go over there to go bring him food and stuff. But he was not answering my calls or nothing. So I was like, like what the hell? Like, why is he not answering my calls? So then I ended up going over there. So he didn't know I was going, you know? But I was going to the hotel to go see what's up and to bring him the food. And I fucking, like, he was answering the door or nothing. And so I made the fucking, um, the clean lady open the door and he opened the door and fucking, um, he had opened the door, they had opened the door and he was right there. And he was right there on the bed all fucking like, what is that, like this, like this. And me, I got scared that he overdosed, you know? So I was like, what the fuck? And I, I was like, I go in more closer, fucking pills are in his hand, foils on the fucking floor. And like, just like, smelled in there and just like, his face looked like fucking OD, but he was just fucking high, so like, nodded out. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what are you doing? And he just got up and looked at me and his auntie and just like, you know, I was surprised and shit. And right there, like, that fucking traumatized the fuck out of me. Because, like, me, like, I'm a big butt smoker. Like, that's all we used to do. We just used to smoke butt and shit. And, like, when I seen that, like, that shit traumatized the fuck out of me. Like, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Like, it just, like, it was stuck in my fucking head. So then, um, a couple of days later, I had, um, I had asked the blood to bring me a pill and, um, I had, like, I already knew, like, how to do it and stuff like that because I seen people out here, you know? And, like, I tried it, and ever since then, like, I just been on them. And I wasn't with him or nothing. I was by myself. But when I had seen that in the hotel, I had broke up with him. And then I experienced this by, like, through our breakup. And then, like, once I started, that first time I just started buying them, like, if it was just fucking bud, you know? And then I got back with him, and that's when we started doing them together. Yeah. That's how I said it. So, have you guys been through an overdose before? Oh, he didn't OD. He was just nodded out in the hotel fucking fell asleep. Yeah. But it looked like he had OD, yeah. you know? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what that was. Have but. you guys ever been through an overdose though? Yeah, yeah. me twice. Yeah. Yeah. How, how'd you make it out of that? I mean... Everything was just at the right time. Like if I was still like OD and no one, you know, no one didn't find me or nothing, like, like I would have, I would have died. It. But my uh, my sister and my brother, they, you know, I was smoking with them and they noticed that like I, like, I wasn't waking up or nothing. So they went went to call my auntie and my auntie she called the ambulance and everything, the firefighters and. I don't know, I thought I was sleeping and I, I woke up with like my family just like surrounding me and then there's the firefighters and I was all wet from them like trying to wake me up pouring water on me and everything like that, so, yeah. That experience didn't like scare you enough to stop the No, Yeah, it did, blues? it did for like two days but you know, I was just like, you know, like it was just a, it was just a bad pill, you know, like like, I was just thinking like, oh man, like that motherfucker just like it was just it was weird too when we we're doing the transaction with him, you know? He, like he was telling us like, 
not to like, you know, not to like hit it like too big or, you know, not to like keep taking hits and shit like that. And it was weird because, you know, when you usually buy shit from people out here, like they don't, they don't tell you that, you know? Yeah. I thought something was weird, but, you know, like, I thought it was good and I just kept, I kept taking hits and then I just fell asleep and I OD'd. Damn, that's yeah. crazy, man. And what do you guys do to get money out here? Like, what do you guys do to survive? Oh, uh, to be honest, um, we, we don't panhandle or nothing, but I do, I do something else. I, um, um, uh, you know. Illegal stuff. Huh? Illegal yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's illegal stuff, you know. It's not nothing bad, like, you know, like, killing or anything like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And do both of your family members know that you guys are out here right now? Yeah. They know about your guys' situation? Yeah. What do they think about it? What do they tell you guys? Well, I mean, my auntie, she, you know, she worries about me and everything, but usually I kind of see her, like, kind of sometimes, like, mostly kind of every day, sometimes. And, you know, she helps me and everything like that, you know, she gives me money and everything, but she just, like, she, whenever I'm done being out here and everything, she wants me to go to her, you know? And then, like, I could just, like, I'll stay with her, and, but I gotta be clean, you know? But she still helps me while I'm, while I'm out here. You know, she, she doesn't judge me or nothing over, like, what well, I want to spend my life on, you know? Yeah, she, she like that. And Monique, what does your family tell you? When I talk to my mom, she always tells me, are you ready to clean? Have you thought about it? Is it coming soon? Every time I talk to her now, she just always tells me, like, am I ready to get clean? When am I going to get clean? She wants me home. But yeah, yeah I still see them. and They still, not really much to more because... My mom had told me, like, she's tired of seeing me out here because I look different. Like, when I first came out here, I was 190, and, like, now I'm, like, 108, 108, and I look different, you know? And, like, your parents don't want to come out here and have to, like, see you out here, and then every time they, you know, they see you, you, like, look di- different, you know? And I still see them and stuff like that, but just not as much, you know? I don't really bug to call them anymore, you know. But if I do, she'll come out here and bring me something to eat. She won't really throw me money as much anymore because she knows, like, what I'm going to spend it on, you know. But she buys me clothes. She brings me stuff to eat, you know. She We go do stuff just to take me out the sun. Stuff like that. How, how do parents know if their kids are experimenting with these blues? What are the some of the early signs that your kids might be experimenting with blues? Hmm. I'd say, I'd say, I'd say if like you're like say if it's your son or anything, if he's like if he's leaving, and if he's leaving constantly, like like every like every day or like or like or he just tells his mom like hey mom like I'm gonna go outside just like keeps leaving going outside going outside you know. Like and every thirty to twenty minutes. Yeah. If his if their fucking stuff starts to go missing, expensive, yeah, expensive clothes, stuff, yeah. shoes. Anything you could try to sell to make money. Um, that's one. That's one of them. That's that's a really big one. Yeah. And what is what is something that a parent can do once they notice that their kids are starting to do blues? What can they do to help them try to get out of it? Just. kind of depends because everybody has a story you know like people people do blues because they're hurt you know some people want to do it just because they're numb they want to feel numb you know I either I'll just like talk to them you know you just gotta talk to them talk them out of it 
Like, tell them what's, like, you know, like, what's bothering like, why do you want to do it, you know? And just... What do you guys think about tough love? You guys think that it works? Like, kicking them out? And no. No, no. It worse. Yeah, it... Tough really love like that is, is more, it's more... Like, Pushing them to the drug. Yeah, you're just, like, you're just... It's just basically just like, you know, just like you wanna do helping them. You're basically helping them get pills, you know? And that's just like, like that ain't love right there. That ain't love. Love is just like having them stay, trying to get them something to eat, you know? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. What up, homie? Good to see you. Good to see you, too, man. Hey, how are you? I actually got a job. Yeah, that's yeah, good. I started working today, man. Yeah? Where at? Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, all right, man. Mm -hmm. All right, for my final question, if one of your family members gets to see this interview, what would you like to tell them? You first. Nah. I tell them that. That, like, I mean, I tell them that I'm sorry that, like, you know, I choose this lifestyle. Like, like back then, like, like, I was a really good kid, you know? Like, I always wanted to be, like, a like a man, you know? Just, like, bring, like, food to the table. Or just, like, just be a young man, you know? And, like, I really never thought of that, like, I'd be this way. But, I mean, I'll tell him that I'm sorry. And, you know, that I love him. And, and I regret, like, doing all this and putting them through all that, you know? Like, like what they're going through and stuff. Cause I know they got feelings for us being out here too, you know. And you know, like I regret I'll do anything to take my life back. And I, I have like, I have a lot of regrets too, you know. But they just gotta understand that, like you know, maybe something's still hurting, you know. And that's why like, I tend to be out here. Well, it's never too late to change, man. And Monique, what would you like to tell your parents or any of your loved ones if they see this interview? I'm sorry. One person that I haven't got to see at all, and I choose to stay away too, because I'm. I don't want to hurt their friends, and I know if they see me, they'll they'll be hurt. They complain. He doesn't deserve, you know, to be hurt at all. That like, he's already been through enough bullshit, you know. And if my uncle sees this, I just want him to know that I'm sorry that like, I chose to like be out here, you know. Cause he's always picked us. Me and my sister, my brother, he's always picked us. He's never done wrong by us. He did nothing but just try to help us, you know. But maybe he ain't down and just picking stupid shit, you know. I'm sorry, you know, I know sorry can't be and say too much because at the end of this video, I know, like, I'm not going to go home, you know, <laughs> but I just want to know that, I just want him to know that I love him a lot and to not think that he felt as a fucking uncle because he could have kept me off these pills. I want him to know that. That he's still the fucking best uncle out there because what he did to save me and my brother and my sister, it was a lot. It was a lot. A lot of bullshit had to go through a lot of time to fucking not go to work, you know. Just a lot of bullshit he fucking did have to put up with, but he put up with, you know. And I just don't want him to think. He raised me different, you know, because I choose to be out here. I just want to know that he did a good job, you know, raising me. I just fucking just don't hope that he doesn't fucking put himself down because I'm out here. I think less of his fucking taking care of me. I just wanted to know that I love him a lot. And one day I'm going to fucking wake the fuck up and be tired of fucking being out here, you know, 24 hours. Fucking sun hitting my fucking back, my face, you know. It's just addiction is hard. Like, like motherfuckers think that like, we want to be out here, you know. Motherfuckers think like we want to be judged all day, every day, getting ugly fucking stares, you know. 
when they look at us, they fucking go talk to, like, their mom, their dad, or whoever they fucked it with, you know? Like, that shit hurts, you know? We got feelings, too, you know? It's just, we got problems, and we live out here, you know? And... Uh, that's pretty much it. Just... But I just want my uncle to know that I love him a lot. And I'm sorry. And my mom, I love my mom, my sister a lot. I love my family a lot. I don't try, I'm sorry I choose this lifestyle. But, yeah. Alright guys, well, thank you for this interview. I really do appreciate it. And just in case uh, my subscribers want to reach out and give out donation, extend the job offer or anything like that, give some encouraging words. Do you guys have any social media where they could contact you guys? Uh, I mean, sometimes we hardly go on our Facebook, but... And it's up to you if you guys want to yeah, give it out. Yeah, I'm on, on Facebook. Mine is... Uh, is capital they're both capital is w s is a capital s is a capital and space uh d is a capital and e z so it's w s d all right man my name's monique vargas um when you look me up it's my face and i have really long long eyelashes and if you go to my pictures i have fucking a bunch of makeup on uh-huh but I don't know if they'll notice me, but my cover, well, if you, I don't, I don't know, but if you go to the cover, the cover is a fucking, it's a boy, uh, like, when you press it, it's just, like, it's gonna show, like, a boy's face, and it says, it says Flacco, so, yeah. Alright, guys, well, thank you for the interviews, and are you guys okay with me using this on my YouTube channel? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm.